Terve! And welcome to Kepper's Garage! So we have achieved the point where we can start installing the electricity stuff. Uh, we have already installed all the wires and now it would be the time to connect everything together. So this is Victron Energy Easy Solar. This is 12 volts and at the continuous maximum output is 1300 watts which is probably more than enough for us. We planned to install this uh, inductive stove because we are not having the gas system so we might need to be a little bit picky on that one because those are like 1600 watt. So yes, uh, what this is, it's combination of solar charge controller, charger, fuse box, uh, it has like everything inside of it and it has some sort of intelligence inside of it also so it controls stuff wisely hopefully so in here goes solar power like from the panels then we have installed the input for like grid power also whenever we can access the grid power we can plug it in so it, it's wise enough to charge then the battery with the grid power and whenever it's disconnected it will use the solar panels. And output wise we have like four 230 volt outputs from which one is planned to use with boiler and it's only working whenever you are connected to grid power. Then we have uh, fuses for output and input, of course, for all the other outputs too. It's super neat, like the specs are perfect, so I'm waiting for it to be a pretty good device. And this episode is made possible by SV Energia Oy. First of all, thank you for great customer service. It was super easy to contact you guys and you were super professional. Like I was this dump do-it-yourself electrician uh, trying to buy something I thought would be nice and uh, you guided me on the correct path with my selections. SV Energia Oy. That's in Finnish. Uh, they have website, also a web shop. I will put link in the description. If you have some sort of need for solar panels or any kind of off-grid stuff or other stuff, you should probably contact them because they can help you, I'm sure. Thanks once again. So the idea is to put this here, you have already seen it there, but we will install the battery up here where the straps are. Let's start by lifting the battery up there. Like a glove. So we will secure it with a couple of wooden bits and there's pin foam around it so it's nice and tight there. Uh, I can probably leave the head unit on its place now. Nice and tight. Right, and this area here will be somehow covered with the other electronic stuff. It's a bit dark here, but that's why we are doing the electricity after all. We want the lights to work. But these are not going directly there. We need to install the shunt between the tables. So it will be connected to the black cable and it will monitor the battery and inform you via Bluetooth. 
So this is actually going to integrate with the main unit, like the same application. So we just add one more information into application by using this. So this will be connected to the minus and there will be plus also from the battery. Yep, I need to lay out all the stuff I want to connect here so I can probably figure out what we are, will be needing. Like all the grey stuff is 12 volts and we want to have them actually up here. Do I have enough cable for? So these are 12 volts and these are mainly lights and pumps and whatnot. So let's see. So the black one will go through this to the battery and the red one should be going directly to the battery. So we probably need to go underneath that one and this tiny cable should be going negative. This guy we will cut. So from there, from there we do it. Pretty thick stuff. I need to get something more better thing to cut it off. Almost same looking thing, but a little bit longer handle so I can get much more pressure to the cable. Alright. So we need to have this here. Should be perfect. Pretty good is not an option. <clears throat> this is not working anymore. Shrink wrap. Then we add some solder in it. Then we need to run the other one up to the battery. I try to use the whole cable and we probably can go with it. So it will go there, there and down there. Then we go with the sharp, sharp one. like to see the solder inside the wires not around it so drastic measures <laughs> it's completely the same so maybe it's good now and we proceed yeah, unfortunately I don't have big enough shrink wrap, so I will use just the tape for now. And of course we can always use tape. That's what they used also when they was building the pyramids. Then they didn't have the shrink wraps. So that's good. Then we connect everything. Or did we need to do something else? I don't remember. Yeah, the wrenching is like cooking. You need to remember clean the place once in a while, so it's much nicer to do the work. And that's clean. This says two battery mines. Alright, now we have 5 amps fuse. Should be enough for now, we can switch the bigger one. First we want to create cable from battery to 12 volt system. 
also to the fuse. This is that one. So this cable will be going to battery and the other side will be going to temporary fuse box. We want to have also black cable. We can use one of these for now. I am going to install all of these inside the connection box or what do you call them. But we will have to have this kind of like universal ground. So we go like this. So now we have positive and negative for the 12 volt system. So let's first connect the negatives. Negatives of these. So we want to have these guys here together. We go Victron and we go with the 12 volt custom stuff. And then we of course want to have the ET phone home thingy, which is this. But that's the way here in Finland. That's there. Then we want to have the positive side. Everything is now off. And this is off. Good. Let's see what happens. So made another cable. <laughs> because I want to have the switch of course there. So we will have the switch here. And the switch will be connected to the battery through the fuse like this so this will be going to battery and until we press the switch nothing should happen here and stuff like that yes and to battery we want to connect also this one which has its own fuse and main one so wish me luck Here goes nothing. Made noise. <laughs> Why was that? I don't understand. I didn't find any problems with the connections. These were loose. That's all. Maybe it just gives a tiny tap while installing it. Nothing else is connected. Everything is off. Yeah. Let's try again. Maybe we just take the tap and put it in there. So like this. Let's see if it does anything. <laughs> I'm scared. Nothing. That's good. Good sign. So press it in. Tiny chap and we are just fine. Too, too pussy installer I would say. That was the cause of everything. Yeah. Whew. Yeah, maybe I was a little bit scared too. No smell. Okay, maybe tiny break and we have to chop it again because I <laughs> forgot this thing out from there and the small wire is pointing the wrong direction. And the firmware update is completed. Seems like we have a full battery. This is awesome. This is the smart shunt section of the application. So we are we can see what's the current draw from the battery it's zero amperes and what has been drawn from the battery stuff like that but let's see what's the other side of the business 
That would be the smart solar. Connecting. Fetching data. Alright. So here we have the smart solar dashboard. And what does it say? No power is currently drawn. Voltage is 12.8 ish. State is off and all is good. So that's pretty nice. Like so. Then we should have something to play around with. So there should be 12 volts whenever the switch is pressed. And we check for voltage. We run zero. Switch on. 12 volts. Perfect. Probably at this point I think I'm going to install the solar panel so we can secure the income also for the battery. But first I think I will need to drown the thing to the car. So these are coming from the roof and I already covered the solar panel with some cardboard so there shouldn't be that much current running in currently. Current currently. <laughs> so it supports three panels up to total of 700 watts. So in front we have negative and in back we have positive. Back one first. So we want to have this there. Some red from there. We snap it. Like this. Now we put in all the wires attached at the bottom now. Then we clamp that and we will also solder it. It's good. Nice. So in here it goes. And here we put in these. First we put in these. So the this connector supposedly will grab onto the insulation. So let's see. Like this. And it's not possible to plug it out from there. Perfect. So that's the first. That's also there now. So now we're supposed to be ready to connect the solar panel. Okay, so we plug it in. Nix, nix. So now it's probably connected. Then the negative. So we have charger connected. Okay, so now I will open the application and after that I will remove the cardboard from the top of the solar panel. So now it should probably give a couple of volts with all the covers, but let's see if we have anything new here. We have new lights blinking here, so, so, we, have, so we have solar voltage. Now, 12 volts and I will go on and remove the stuff from there, so you keep an eye on the measurement in the screen. I will shout whenever it should change a bit. Alright, greetings from the roof. 
Let's get ready to rumble. Now I'm taking off the cardboard. And it should have something going on there. Ooh, I should clean it. It's pretty dirty. Hopefully it says something more than 12 volts and nothing is on fire. Is this everything okay here? It, so it's now like cloudy, sunny. There is sun but it's behind the clouds. So we are running 100 watts in. Perfect. That has to mean that it works. State is on, state is bulk. So are we now maintaining the battery or what we are doing? I should probably read the manual. You know, RDFM. We have the cable from our camper life. We did have the tr camper trailer, so we have all the gear needed. Maybe I first hook, hook this in to this thingy we created a while ago. And we will see what happens. Right? So that goes there. Then we put in the this guy. And if the wife comes out from the house and says there is no power, we probably know who's the responsible one for that. Now we are connected to the grid. There's no smokes. Let's see. I will check that we don't have any current on the van case or on the case of the head unit. AC 200, 600 volts. And we will check. We don't want to have anything. So we are clear with that one for now. We can probably also a little bit touch it. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not a good idea to test it like that. So now we will enable the input fuse and that will actually just bring the power in here. So let's see what happens. Input. So now the device is actually powered. So let's see about the application now. You probably should not have anything different here until we turn it in the charger mode. Okay, we have only the solar power. So let's check the charger only mode. And is it anything different now? So I didn't do anything. It took just a little bit of time. So, but now it activated the charging. And let's see. The voltage is now stable, 14.8. And now it seems like the solar panel did drop onto the 1 watt. So we are not having anything coming in from the solar panel. But we still have the voltage over the normal voltage. So this is the charging voltage. And I would assume that it's now working. Perfect. So next step will be to try some of those 230 devices. So remember that all the AC connections need to be verified by the electrician and should be connected also by them. In Finland at least. I have already the refrigerator connected here so let's try that. Uh, we want to have the output enabled and we want to have the inverter on. And that's now on. I have the refrigerator here in the second one. Uh, then we have the kitchen wall which is not yet connected so let's not touch that. Then we have the sofa door and the cabin. Uh, this is the toilet sofa thingy. So let's try the refrigerator and see what happens. Sound. Some sort of sound happened. Tiny humming. Let's see the refrigerator. And here we have it. 
Yippee! It's working! So this is now the AC powered refrigerator working. That's pretty neat. And there is also lights here. So let's consider the electrics working. That's pretty cool. So it's actually been a couple of days now. I We have been running the refrigerator through the weekend. And the Victron application is calculating that in, with the current draw it will last like 8 days. So that's pretty neat. So it's only the refrigerator. But we don't have anything else here really. We only have the lights, the fridge. Of course we will have some sort of cooking stuff. But we will do most of the cooking on the bar barbecue we have. And that, that works with the gas. And big thanks to SV Energia. The devices are great and works just like planned. Like you probably can see we are still missing couple of sockets from there and there. And here we also will be having the tiny display to control our 12 volt stuff. And actually also to control some of the other electricity. Uh, because we are having these kind of things. These are Shelly products and these are smart relays with energy metering. So we can control all the electricity stuff with our smartphones. They will display also the uh, amount of electricity consumed and all kind of other stuff. That's gonna be another episode and we will check how to do that. And thanks for hanging out up to the end. And please subscribe the channel if you haven't done so already. Hit like and leave some comments if you like. It all helps the algorithms to promote the video. Thank you. See you on the next one.